I think the best way to understand the difference between this individual and myself is simply to look at the name that he gave himself, Thought Slime, and the image in the background of his video. What the fuck? Mr. Thought Slime has this image of slime, green gross slime, pouring out of a sewer. What is wrong with this fucking guy? What is he talking about? I'm not particularly interested in hearing what someone says if they name themselves after something that I don't particularly like. They're trying to get rid of slime. They're trying to get rid of dirt. They don't like the fact that, you know, the infrastructure of the United States is falling apart, that our roads and bridges are in decay, that, uh, that our water is being contaminated with lead, that this is opioids, so fucking drugs, stupid. Mm, so we, we need to analyze, we need to analyze his name and the slime in his background. You know, what can we infer from this slime? What can we infer from the color of the curtains? This is like, he's trying so hard to be profound and it just comes off like a parody. Mr. Okay, I'm going to do my best impression here. Mr. Ford Slime, in conclusion, when I look at your channel, I see your name. Slime? I see your background. Slime? Well, Mr. Ford Slime. Me, as a suited up individual, to me that is disgusting. People like me, we are trying to get rid of slime. We do not want any more slime in our lives. We want to get rid of the slime. We want to get rid of the slime that we is the billionaires. We want to get rid of the slime that is global capitalism. We want to get rid of the slime that is imperialism. So Mr. Ford Slime, I find it very interesting that you endorse imperialism, billionaires, and capitalism by naming yourself after slime, a disgusting substance that no one should ever want. Yeah, Anyone know what's going on? Anyone understand? No, hey folks, so it's recently come to my attention that a certain internet pseudo-leftist personality who calls himself... Wait, so thought can anyone explain what that intro was about? The fuck that doesn't do anything. <laughs> has decided to target Jyoti Brar, a prominent communist leader, and myself. Um, the reason he's decided to go after us is because he disapproves of something that Jyoti Brar said in an interview I did with her nine months ago. Okay, so are you guys familiar with this interview? Well, let's take a look at it. What did she say in that interview that he did nine months ago? Let's see, let's see what Morpin said. If he happens to use uh, some sort of dog whistle here when talking about transgender people, let's see. And if, you know, Morpin actually brings a topic up, by the way, so we're going to see. I was asking you about before about kind of distinguishing yourself as a communist from the mainstream of the left. I noticed that your political organization has taken quite a stand on the transgenderism debate. <laughs> I noticed that your political organization has taken, has taken quite a stand on the transgenderism debate. It's a pretty, pretty interesting way to talk about it, Caleb. Um, pretty interesting leading question there as well. Is that, how, is that how she's distinguished herself? Just by taking a different stand on the transgenderism debate? Is that, is that a way to distinguish yourself as someone special? I don't know. Let's, let's see. What did she say? Hey, can you talk she's about really happy position? about that question. She's like, fuck yeah, sure. he asked it. I mean, essentially, our view is, and it's not about people. We're not against a trans person. It's the ideology that's being pushed on people that says, you are what you think you are. Now, this is total idealism. Idealism in the philo philosophical sense of the opposite of materialism. It says, I think, therefore I am. Whatever. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of, there's a lot of science backing up um, trans identities. So this is obviously bullshit. It's anti-materialism to just ignore that. But hey, who cares, you know? All right. You know, it's not so much about her, it's about his reaction to this. And you'll see, he doesn't push back at all. Like, he's nodding along with her. He even laughs at her, like, transphobic jokes and stuff. And you kind of get the impression that he's on board with this. I think that's reality. Now, it's as just a reality. Marxist, he sounds, we have to... She sounds exactly like a right-winger, by the way. Um, there's only two genders. Um, facts don't care about your feelings. Uphold the idea that, or the reality... That, that material reality is him. real and is the basis of our ideas. A Marxist says, first there's reality, then our brain interprets reality and gets ideas. An idealist says, no, first there's the idea, and then the idea produces reality. Now, life teaches us that materialism is true. <laughs> materialism can be tested by science, by living. Idealism 
um, you know, is a human construct. Wait, so trans identities can't be tested by, by living? I don't know, whatever. What, there's no point replying to this person. It's what makes gods, okay? Um, this transgender ideology is pure idealism. It says, if I feel something, it's true. We've all got our own reality. We've all got our own way of, now, of course, we all have our own feelings. Yes, can't dispute that. But your feelings are a reflection of something. Your feelings come from somewhere. We would say that material reality exists and sexual differences between men and women exist. They're not imaginary. They're not and? a societal construct. And? You know, the, the transgender ideologists, and I do want to keep making this clear, we're not talking about individuals. We're talking about those who push an ideology. So, you know, before I start getting... We're not talking about individuals. We're talking about individuals who push an, who push an ideology, which is individuals. It's, it's hard to watch this and like just nod along like Caleb is doing because she contradicts herself with every, every second sentence. But, you know, he's just there. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, what does nodding along with someone mean if not that you agree? You know, it's fair to assume that since Caleb doesn't push back against this at all, that, you know, he's, he's at least in agreement with her to some extent. Being accused of hate speech. This is about ideas. This is a rational debate about ideas. It's not me hating anybody. Okay. But um, the people who push this transgender ideology have tried to make a confusion bet and say that gender is something different to sex. Well, in I just fact, want to get to Caleb's delicate. response rather than listening you know, to this. Press that look so how that is his reaction? He's nodding to every single thing. A look that we'll be happy to, to see disappear into history, and they're kind of perpetuating it. Well, that's I, I wanted to ask you as as you made reference to that, you also talked about, you know, being accused of hate speech. And I've noticed increasingly I mean he he literally doesn't question her at all. He's just like, oh, you know, that's great, all that stuff you said. So, you know, how have you been repressed because of your beliefs? You know, are people accusing you of hate speech? There is a lot less tolerance for different views in left circles. I mean, just everything you've said here would be grounds to get you banned from various left wing conventions or gatherings. I mean, see, Caleb isn't he immediately just goes to like saying, so, you know, ah, oh, you've said all of these things. I've nodded along to it. I haven't pushed back against it at all. You know, he jumps immediately to, wow, that, you know, it sucks that, that you know, you're, you're going to get banned from leftist gatherings for this. You're going to get cancelled. It's difficult to watch this and not think that he agrees. If he doesn't agree, he's, he sure as hell doesn't, doesn't care about making it known. He cares much more about, like, going straight to feeding into her narrative of being oppressed because of, because of expressing, you know, these, these natural scientific views. You know, someone could even, I've even heard people advocate violence against people who, who state such things. And what's going on in left, in left circles where there's an atmosphere left where it's circles. saying the kind of things that you just said, are, it's not acceptable. So, you know, trans people who might, might get offended that someone is telling them that they basically don't exist. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Why so, yeah, that's, I could just watch all this, but that's the gist. That's what, that's what Fort Slam took issue with. This interview which is mostly this woman, but Caleb is just kind of sitting there, just nodding along, and then giving her like leading questions that really seem like the kind of questions that she wants to be asked. It's difficult to watch this and not be like, hmm, you know, if this was a journalist, if this was an interviewer, like giving these sorts of like questions that just um, feed straight into the narrative of the interviewee about, you know, a topic that Caleb is passionate about, like how great Chinese or whatever, he'll be pissed off. For someone to watch that and assume that he's on board with this person's views is very fair. But in, I don't know, Caleb seems to take this Fort Slime, like pushing back against this as some sort of sacrilege. Like Fort Slime is against the working class and against Marxism and all this sort of stuff because he criticized this woman's view on, on transgenderism, as they call it. Material analysis is good for a lot of things. It can help you build a bridge or manage an economy. It can't tell you whether a poem is good. I'm not saying you're a bad person or a bad leftist, necessarily. Sure. Before you, you see Nazbol ghoul Caleb Maupin talking to Jody Brar of the Communist Party of Great Britain. And what she's saying sucks. 
Now, this is not the first time that someone has tried to paint me as a bigot who advocates further oppression of the transgender community. However, I've always given a pretty clear answer when directly asked about the issue. Take a listen to what happened when Vosh tried to gotcha me and paint me as a transphobe in our recent debate about tankies and their role in the left. You see, the thing here is that um, Fort Slime is obviously responding to this one video. Fort Slime is responding to this one interview, and he didn't accuse Caleb of being transphobic yet, at least. He accused the woman of being transphobic. He said that Caleb was a Nazbol ghoul, which is true, he is a Nazbol ghoul. And as I just went over, watching that interview, it is pretty fucking easy to come away with the conclusion that Caleb doesn't really give a shit about anything that this woman's saying, that he agrees with what she's saying even, because he's nodding along the entire time. He doesn't push back to it. He doesn't push back against it. And he doesn't like, he just immediately leads, like gives her like the perfect leading question afterwards. So yeah. How do you feel about transgender people, if I might ask? So now I think the way that they're, they're treated is awful. Other Bullying, hate thing. crimes, it's despicable. The way people, you know, have been separated from their families, kicked out of their households. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I feel nothing but empathy for people this that is are not transgender. Bosch and Fort Slam don't like each other. So, like, Caleb seems to think that basically everyone who doesn't like him is like an amorphous blob. Every single one of them is the same. Like, they have the same views. They're essentially the same person. I don't know. Face all the hate and discrimination on that basis. But you agree that gender reassignment surgery is a valid way of, um, of, uh, of addressing their, you know, a gender dysphoria in many cases. If an right? adult chooses to do that, that's their business. It has nothing to do with me. Okay. Well. You know that Caleb doesn't, like, he, he skirts around actually saying, like, yes, trans women are women, trans men are men, you know. He just says, like, you know, I think it's bad that they're oppressed, you know. I don't really care about them. It's sort of like a a right libertarian argument and he you know he could just say like yes trans women are whatever gender they they say they are whatever i believe them i believe their lived experience blah 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 very easy but he skirts around it in a way that to him probably seems you know it probably seems very you know a good thing to say like but to someone like me who He's very familiar with this sort of shit, and I'm sure a lot of these viewers, it's fucking obvious that he's just avoiding the question. You know, a lot of, of anti-Semites, for example, will say, um, you know, uh, I, I don't want, I don't want um, there to be any violence against Jewish people. I don't want there to be any discrimination against Jewish people. They just control the world. And, you know, they won't actually address the second part. They won't, they won't denounce that second part. Uh, hate crimes, discrimination, bullying is something that any progressive would oppose. I, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. What about China? The thing is... I mean, Vosh is... That is really funny, though, that Vosh just goes to... What about China? I agree, that's hilarious. What the fuck, dude? Like, you should have just pressed him on what I was saying. That's what I would have done. Just press him on the question that he was clearly avoiding. I feel like, I don't know, maybe Vosh was half asleep. I didn't watch him, so maybe he's not really that stupid. <laughs> what is that's really funny <laughs> what about china though dude what the fuck is that to do with anything <laughs> i've always understood the transgender issue to be an issue of human rights transgender people are victims of hate crimes very frequently by bigots who He's somehow feel himself. threatened by their very existence transgender people have difficulty finding jobs because of discrimination and employment Transgender people uh, often face being kicked out of their households Epic because fail. their families reject them and don't accept them. And I have always opposed this. My orientation has always been that this kind of discrimination, this kind of castigation and oppression of one... Yeah, but the question isn't, isn't, are you against oppression of these people? It's, you know, do you think they are valid? Do you accept, you know, basically the settled science on their their identities being a real thing that exists. And he's not answering that question. The section of the working class hurts all working people and should be opposed by progressive forces. Now, not only have I always taken this position, but I've been quite active around it. Before I was a journalist, when I was an activist, on many occasions, I took to the streets of New York City to march for trans rights. In New York City, the NYPD, the police department here, actually had a policy 
of profiling transgender women and stopping and frisking them and some cases often arresting them unjustly on charges of prostitution. And I was involved in many protests around that issue and around the fact that the New York City Police Department was targeting the transgender. That's great. He doesn't answer the question though. Like the, the issue here is that he gave a platform to this obvious transphobic person who was basically denying trans identity and he doesn't address it. He doesn't address it. He just like, you know, I went to these, these marches, you know, I'm against discrimination, blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't address the question at hand. LGBT people, gay and lesbian and transgender people. I had the opportunity of being involved in planning a reception for her when she came to New York City. I have always viewed the oppression of transgender people as an issue of human rights. What's the debate now, about? you'll no notice debate. that the clip which this thought slime individual objected to was not about whether transgender people should be beaten up and killed, it wasn't about whether they should face discrimination in hiring, it wasn't about whether their families should reject them, it wasn't about any of that. It was about transgender ideology. And honestly, I do not know enough about this topic. I am not well informed enough. You don't know enough about this topic. Why did you bring someone onto your platform and just let them talk for 30 minutes straight while you nod along and give them perfect leading questions? I don't know. Why can't you just accept like that you fucked up? He's going on about something different. About the issue of transgender ideology. The rest of this video, like, uh, I really want to get to the fun parts of this video because he gets really unhinged. Like, tran like, I just want to say here, like, the fact that he calls it transgender ideology, that's already a dog whistle. Like, the idea that there's some sort of ideology behind this rather than something that, that has been backed up scientifically quite a bit. But he calls it an ideology. It's like, what, you know, what if someone said, um, you know, I, I honestly don't know enough about this, this black ideology to, to know if black people are real or not. Same sort of thing. Make a comment on it. So I... Let Jyoti Brar, a prominent British communist who I respect deeply, give her opinion. And this thought slime objects to her opinion. The thing is, I don't view the transgender issue as an abstract ideological question. I view it as an issue of human rights and an issue of affecting people's lives. And this is starting to point to the real difference between me and this thought slime individual. Is this like, he's saying this like it's a bad thing. So... Helen Morpin says he, he just believes that, you know, everyone should be, dis should be respected, they shouldn't be discriminated against, it's a human rights issue. Now, I'm sure that Fort Slime agrees with all of that. No one should endure all of that bad stuff. But he also, you know, thinks that, you know, trans identities are valid, trans people are valid, even apart from all of that. But Morpin is trying to frame it as like, these, these are diametrically opposed ideas. They're not, buddy. They're not. And a lot of people that are out to malign and slander this legitimate anti imperialist Marxists yeah, and activists. The likes of Mr. Thought Slime try to portray it as if you must be a supporter of imperialism if you are to advocate against the oppression of transgender people. What the fuck? That is like nonsensical. Does he, does he cite this? How, does he, like, well, and furthermore, like all. So. He's saying, like, I want to hear that again, because what the fuck? To malign and slander legitimate anti-imperialist Marxists and activists. The likes of Mr. Thought Slime. So, wait, if you are an anti-imperialist and a Marxist and an activist, you, 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 you cannot be held to account for shitty things that you say and shitty beliefs that you express and put out there, clearly trying to influence people's perceptions. Try to portray it as if you must be a supporter of imperialism. Dude, this video has absolutely, his video has fucking, I'm, I, I haven't even watched it, but I'm 100% sure. There is no point in this video where he says anything like that, or Caleb would have put it here. Caleb is like, like, I don't know, he sees like any sort of criticism for any reason of anyone who he considers to be an anti-imperialist as an attack on the very, the very notion of anti-imperialism. It makes no sense. If you are to advocate against the oppression of transgender people. And furthermore, all who defend anti-imperialist and existing socialist states are somehow advocates of harming transgender people. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? The fuck is this guy talking about? Like he always somehow manages to manages to like change change the topic 
to his pet idea, which is that he is an incredible anti-imperialist, and anyone who criticizes him or people who he considers like him is doing it because they love imperialism. You know, apparently talking to someone who very much may be an anti-imperialist who that woman, maybe she isn't, who knows, but who is also a transphobe, and noting that they are a transphobe who, who are spreading shitty ideas using his platform while he nods along, and then just gives them the perfect question that I'm sure they agreed upon beforehand. You know, if you criticize him and that person, you're an imperialist. Doesn't make any sense. And he goes on like this for the rest of the video. People, that is a huge, huge misconception. Who was the first prominent transgender activist in U.S. history? It was Leslie Feinberg. Leslie Feinberg was a leader of the Workers' World Party. And Leslie Feinberg was a tanky. She was a defender of Cuba, a defender of- Is it just like, hey, this trans person, this trans person held similar views to me on this other issue. He's literally like not responding to what he purports to be responding to. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck is he talking about? I don't understand. I don't think anyone really understands. I don't think even his viewers understand. He just does this the whole time. Like, so here's his argument so far. Let's just, just recap. So. Um, he, Caleb sees himself as an anti-imperialist. He sees the, the woman who he had on his show as an anti-imperialist. And this other trans person, and this trans person, historical trans person, was an anti-imperialist. Therefore, somehow, criticizing him and the, and the woman who he had on his show for being transphobes, I mean, maybe transphobe is too much to call Caleb at this point, but the, the woman, absolutely, um, makes you an imperialist by proxy. That's all he's saying. It's literally nonsensical. It make, it's like, it's like a PragerU sort of argument. The Soviet Union and China. She spoke in defense of the Islamic Republic of Iran. She spoke in defense of many governments around the world, and she viewed the transgender struggle as a struggle that was involved with tearing down U.S. imperialism. Now, I don't know whether what Jyoti Brar said about the ideology being I 100% guarantee you that Flotsheim thinks that, you know, the validity of trans identities, the acceptance of trans people, is also linked to imperialism. 100% guarantee you. But, I mean, we're making, like, straw men here, so we can't think about these sort of things, I guess. Being promoted by many transgender activists today is correct or not. I simply don't have the knowledge. I've heard people from both sides of the issue talk, and they, they both say things that are very persuasive. I just don't know enough. Oh, uh, you know, they both say things that are very persuasive. You know, we got they're, they're both sides, you know. There's no difference here. Everything's all the same. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. But, I mean, it's pretty clear that he's saying he's taking a side here. He's saying, like, you know, I apply the same, the same human rights principles to everyone, including trans people first, but he's not willing to come out and actually say something explicitly in support of trans people specifically, in support of the validity of their identities, and in support of the, you know, specificness of their struggle. It's very telling, and it, I don't know, he's kind of trying to play both sides of his audience, maybe, or maybe he's just, you know, he knows that he can't say the quiet part out loud. ...about it. However, however, even if Jyoti Brar were to be dead wrong about this issue, even if everything she said was completely wrong, that would not take away from the fact that Jyoti Brar is an amazing, heroic, anti-imperialist activist. And this is at the root of... So, I have no... I don't know who this person is, so she may very well be the greatest, most important activist of our time. Doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make her transphobia okay. And it doesn't make someone who brings up her transphobia some sort of imperialist shill, okay? Like, are you fucking serious right now? Like, we're not even allowed to talk about this? One of the greatest crimes that this internet milieu, this cesspool of pseudo-leftists commit, Jyoti Brar and the Communist Party of Great Britain Marxist-Leninist have been... Did I, so he just literally said that it's a crime to be against these, you know, to, to criticize people. If, 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 if Kayla Morpin thinks that they are good, good anti-imperialists and you criticize them for something that is, you know, at least, at least tangentially unrelated, I don't think that trans rights are unrelated to imperialism, but, you know, 
if you criticize them for their view on, on something specific, you, you cannot do that without being an imperialist. Okay, you cannot do that without being against what everything else that they also stand for. Interesting. Forefront of struggling for the rights of working people in the United Kingdom. Furthermore, they have been on the forefront of opposing imperialism. Jyoti has traveled to Palestine to stand with the Palestinian people. Jyoti traveled to Libya. Traveling doesn't make you on the forefront of anti-imperialism. People on the forefront of anti-imperialism are the people in those countries. Like, it really feels like sometimes for these people, especially Caleb, who constantly cites, oh, I went, I went, you know, I went to Iran a few times, stuff like that. It's kind of like just ticking off a box on what they see as sort of a resume of activism. Oh, I've been to this country. I've been to that country. Okay. It doesn't put you on the forefront of imperialism. It makes you basically a tourist. To offer support to the people of Libya as they built socialism on the African continent in the face of sanctions and attacks from the United States. The Communist Party of Great Britain Marxist-Leninist and Jyoti Brar beat the drum very loudly that socialism is an alternative to capitalism and that the banks, factories, and industries can be organized to serve public good and not profits. Is it possible that great revolutionary activists who do great, important, amazing work to oppose capitalism and imperialism can also make mistakes? Yes, it is, but not according to Mr. Thoughtslime. I'm pretty sure Fort Slime 100% agrees with everything that you just said. It's possible for people who are all of those things to have shitty views as well. But does he even cite Fort Slime? Like, he doesn't, he doesn't actually provide any example of how Fort Slime thinks that a trans person, like, someone cannot be a transphobe, but also be all of those things. And, you know, if, if transphobia and all of those things are linked to imperialism, as I'm sure Caleb would agree, then, you know... It's kind of a contradiction between those two those two things as well and that would make someone who you know does all of those amazing things that he thinks this person does but who is also a transphobe have some very conflicting views that they should kind of work out and it's especially funny because caleb is very much sort of an absolutist who sees anyone who like diverges from his views on whatever to be an imperialist shill so i don't know lots of dumb shit coming out here basically can't believe that people say this guy is very smart. I mean, I, I never do live streams. I have no script. I consider myself terrible at doing this sort of thing that I'm doing right now, you know, just sort of coming up on shit on the spot. So if I, of all people, can so easily point out how what you're saying is fucking stupid, I don't know, you're not doing very well, buddy. If you say one thing that he disagrees with, not about human rights, but rather about ideology, you're a... Apparently, trans identity and the validity of that identity is just ideology. You see, the fact that the fact that he frames the fact that he frames trans people and their very existence as a matter of ideology, rather than as a matter of materialism, as a matter of simple reality, is transphobic. He's not. I'm not going to convince him of that. I'm just talking to you about that. Nazbol, that's what he referred to me as, and not only are you wrong, but you deserve to be beaten up. That's basically what he's arguing here. He would have myself, uh, someone who has been very outspoken in opposing all forms of oppression, he would have Jyoti Brar, a prominent leader. Where does he fucking say this? Do you guys notice he doesn't, like, this is like an eight, so we're eight minutes into this response, and so far he's actually put forth slime on the screen one fucking time. One fucking time. God, this is, this is dumber than I thought it was. A, a communist activists and a woman of color in the United Kingdom attacked as Red Browns and Nazbols because we apparently aren't on board with him, not about the human rights of transgender people, but about an ideological question of which he has a very specific view. Jyoti Brar... An ideological question. An ideological question of which he has a very specific view. This guy very very clearly agrees with her even if he's not coming out and saying he very clearly agrees with jody bra rise it whatever so yeah he's just you know he's trying to reframe the discussion from being one of, of materialism of a of you know reality to being one where you know these people's identities are, are something that is debatable very like myself is a communist however she is a communist like just she's a communist she's an imperialist that makes her a good person, and if you dare to critique her on something that is unrelated to those other things, or mostly unrelated, I consider her very related, and I consider her to be a pretty shitty fucking communist for, denying, for just denying the science on trans identities and the validity of their struggle. But, you know, 
this understanding that I have that sometimes people can take very good progressive views on some issues while being problematic and very wrong on others doesn't simply apply to communists. I have been widely attacked because I will defend and uphold the role played by the black minister Louis Farrakhan. Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam is not a communist and there are things that he has said about Jewish people and about the LGBT community that I vehemently disagree with. However, I realize that there's a lot more to Minister Louis Farrakhan than these comments. Minister Louis Farrakhan organized the Million Man March, one of the most important civil rights and black community empowerment demonstrations in the entire history of the country. Minister Louis Farrakhan's organization, the Nation of Islam, is in communities, helping people to get off drugs, serving prisoners, serving low-income people, providing services. That's great. Did you know that he thinks that all of those problems are caused by an international Jewish, con Jewish conspiracy? The casting couch is Jewish power, apparently. The righteous Jews and the satanic Jews, these are all very recent. He has much worse ones from like 20 years ago. Satan is going down. Farrakhan has pulled the cover of the eyes of the satanic Jew. The government is my enemy. The powerful Jews are my enemy. That's a quote. Please don't clip this. The Jews were responsible for all of this filth and de degenerate behavior. This is like, dude, this is recent. This is two years old. There are righteous Jews, good Jews. There are others who don't want to practice the teaching of the prophet, blah, blah, blah. To my Jewish friends, I shouldn't use the, the word friends so lightly. You have been a great master and deceiver. But God is going to pull the colors all off of you. The covers all off of you. It's one thing to say that Farrakhan in, you know, instances has done good things. It's another thing to just look past the fact that he believes at his core that all the things that he denounces are caused by some international Jewish conspiracy. I think we can do better than, you know, this. I think there's plenty of people out there who don't believe this sort of thing, who don't believe that the root of all of the problems of their community comes from some generic anti-Semitic conspiracy. But we're not going to hear Mr. Caleb Morpin talk about that. We're going to hear him talk about how anyone who, who talks, who says, who says these things is a woke scold. Hates the left is an imperialist. Minister Louis Farrakhan is anti-imperialist, and he always exactly. makes the point of linking the struggle for black freedom in the United States with the struggle of people around the world against U.S. imperialism. There are people who do that without believing that all of it is a global Jewish conspiracy. Interesting how we have to... We have to prop up this one specific guy, we have to look towards this one specific guy, rather than, you know, the countless other people in the black community who believe all of those things, who are actual, you know, communists, who believe in materialism, and who, you know, don't believe that every single problem that that community faces is caused by a global Jewish conspiracy. And I think that despite the problematic things that Minister Louis Farrakhan says and believes, he plays a very dynamic and important role. And let me add that in 2011, when NATO bombs were falling and Libya... I don't, I don't understand, like he, met, like, he somehow takes Ford Slam's video and just makes it about literally everything else that has ever happened in history. You guys, you guys seeing this? This is just me. Like, Ford Slam criticized... The woman who he, he chose to platform on his stream and you know sort of gave her a, a rebuttal to the stuff that, that she was talking about so because of this fourth slime supports imperialism this is somehow linked to you know the nato bombing of libya this is somehow linked to the invasion of iraq to the invasion of afghanistan you know if you criticize this woman you support all of these things i do not understand how someone can watch this and find it insightful and be like, wow, yeah, this, this is, you know, truth to power, dude. We can do much better than someone who's this fucking stupid. We have faced a bombing and an onslaught at the hands of U.S. No. This is him explaining how he seems to understand the class struggle. The fact that a small handful of rich ghouls own most have a of the money and will all die of starvation and exposure if we don't get some of it, even though we're producing more than we need and throwing away almost half of everything at a time when that overproduction is poised to make our planet uninhabitable, just so that the already unfathomably rich ghouls can have a computer readout that says that their wealth increased by 0.0001%, and the only way that you can get the mean 
means of your survival is by throwing yourself into perpetual and worsening exploitation forever? need to worry about making a living and surviving the forthcoming end of the world. Well, the aforementioned handful of rich ghouls don't. So according to Mr. Thought Slime, the problem with capitalism isn't that in the pursuit of profits, capitalists are organizing the economy irrationally, and that even though the levels of productivity are rising, people... Capitalists organize the economy rationally to, for their own interests. Everything they do is 100% rational if you see it from that standpoint. I'm sure anyone here would agree. I'm sure any Marxist would agree. They're organizing it irrationally from the sense that it doesn't exactly suit every other class of people. So people are getting further and further into poverty. The problem with capitalism is that there's just too many resources being used. That's not what he fucking said. He said the prop. he said, you know, he, he said, I mean, I'm sure that Ford Slime has much more developed critiques than what he just said. But he said that, you know, rich people are living in ridiculous excess while poor people are having to do crazy shit to survive. <sighs> and some, somehow Caleb twists this into being, Fort Slime is against, you know, he's against consumption. Oh, he also says that because of this, Fort Slime is for, is, like, is you know, is a eugenicist who is against overpopulation as well. Oops, there's too many people in the world. Uh, we all have too much stuff. What the fuck are you talking about? He specifically said the problem is that a specific class of people have too much stuff while everyone else is going without. What the fuck are you talking about, you fucking moron? Uh, we're overproducing, as he put it, and, uh, and people are just too comfortable and they're consuming too much. The thing is, we factually are overproducing. As Caleb Morpin just said, the, the system that is uphold from our point of view is irrational. It's leading us to our destruction, you know, creating basically a bunch of shit that no one needs. You know, like having, for example, 10 different brands of, of chickpeas or whatever. So noting that overproduction exists is not some sort of anti-materialist position. You can, let's, let's look at statistics. How much food grown on, like, how much food grown on US farms goes to waste? An estimated 40% of food goes uneated, goes uneaten. That is the simplest example possible. This is what the kind of thing that Ford Slime is talking about. He's not, he's not being like, you know, we, we, you know, we are, we need to hug the fucking trees and stop, stop creating stuff and, you know, return to a state of nature. And also we need to, we need to cull half the population. No, he's referencing this sort of thing. You know, honestly, I'm, I'm, Morpin doesn't deserve this sort of response. He doesn't deserve sort of rational response because he's not being rational. He's inferring so much bullshit. That isn't actually there. That's not Marxism. That's called Malthusianism. No, it's not. He literally, nothing he said could possibly be construed as Malthusianistic. I have no fucking clue what this and is And Malthusianism about. is an idea that Karl Marx thoroughly refuted. Like, he, he just shows like a clip. Like, so in this video, he's only shown two clips of about 30 seconds each. And each time he's just use that clip to jump on to talking about something else completely. Mr. Thought Slime should read Theories of Surplus Value. I 100% guarantee you that Thought Slime understands the theory of surplus value. What the fuck does it have to do with anything? God, man. And read how Karl Marx completely refuted in Ireland and many other people with Marxism. Natural gas is the basis for running our global economy. We need higher forms of energy, like perhaps fusion. Uh, we need to expand the space program. We need a more efficient way of raising people out of poverty and producing the energy needed for life. And that if we don't do it soon, there will be some ecological problems. But the issue at hand is not that human beings are consuming too much. It's rather that the economy is organized in an irrational way. I mean, what Fort Slim said is not incompatible with this at all. He was talking about overconsumption of rich people, the lavish lifestyles of rich people. He was speaking of it from a moralistic standpoint where it's wrong to have these people who have so much when, when most other people have so little and basically have to go through backbreaking labor to survive. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's 100% true. And somehow, because of that, I don't know, he's linking it to all because this it's other stuff that wasn't there. 
owned by private capitalists who exploit workers to make profits and in their naked pursuit of profits, they're endangering the environment and threatening human progress. That is literally what Fultzlein was saying. But watching this video forces me to ask some more questions about Mr. Thoughts. You know, watching the fucking video. His beliefs and his motivations. Take a look at this part. Me and a black dude might be equally exploited working at a Burger King together. Say you're working at Burger King. Your coworker comes to you because they know you're a big time left though, big time workers' rights kind of person, and they're like, hey, I think I might be trans and I want to start to transition, but I'm really afraid that if I do, I'll lose my job. Hmm. Burger King. Now, I really doubt that Mr. Thought Slime has ever worked in fast food. However, hold that thought, you fucking idiot. You f absolute fucking moron. You embarrassing fucking dipshit. You embarrassing fucking bright red piece of shit. Two months you complete moron. Months ago, I made a video about my first job, which was at a fucking Tim Google. Hortons, which is a shitty Canadian. You Hello, it's me, the Invader. Remember that I worked for a Canadian coffee chain called Tim Hortons. I also worked at a Pizza Hut in a gas station that- You complete fucking piece of shit, Kevin. Content Hortons. warning. This I needed the job to pay for my university. Chris, familiar? I had a shitty Canadian coffee chain called Tim Hortons. If you're not Canadian and thus aren't familiar, imagine Starbucks, but worse and cheaper but with more donuts. I was still living with my parents at the time, but I needed the job to pay for my university tuition. And I hated it. I hated every to do, how to sing monitored. Stupid fucking moron. I did work in fast food when I was a college right. student. Him One too. summer, during my college times, years, actually. I actually worked at a sandwich shop that was fast food and- So wait, we have Caleb Morpin here talking about getting a summer job. And then we have Ford Slam talking about, you know, how he worked in retail and in fast food to, to actually survive. And this guy has the fucking goal to tell that guy that he's not working class, that he's not like a real worker. Cleveland area near the college I went to. And I'll tell you, that was a miserable job. I mean, they were constantly yeah. driving you faster to yeah, make is. those sandwiches and yeah. churn out those orders. Uh, it was very, very difficult yeah, to keep Slam up knows the pace. Way more about and I'll tell you me. one thing. The last thing that I ever did when I was working, uh, assembling hamburgers and running the fryer at a fast food place was to talk to my coworkers about their gender identity. Uh, we weren't sitting there and having group therapy. What he's doing here is a very common thing where people try to uh, disconnect, you know, race, gender identity, you know, issues of dis discrimination of women, stuff like that. And, they, and he tries to say, you know, when you're working class, everything's equal. It's not only class reductionism, but it's the stupidest fucking class reductionist argument you can possibly imagine. And talking about discrimination or how we felt about our gender identities, we were being driven to work harder and harder and harder. Um, yeah, so uh, he seems a little bit out of touch when he's giving us a lecture about uh, transgender people at Burger King. Hey buddy, I'm pretty sure that he knows much more about this than you do, as I kind of just showed, you fucking dumbass. Anyway. But let's give the actual Marxist approach to the issue of anti-transgender bigotry that one might experience among one's co-workers at a fast food restaurant. The Marxist answer- He did not say among one's co-workers. He said, you know, what, what if someone came up to you and said, um, Hey, I want to come out as trans, but I'm worried that I'll lose my job. It's not, it's not about being discriminated against by the other workers. It's about being discriminated against by the employer. So he once again makes it up into something else. Sir, has always been solidarity. But there are many workers in the United States right now, not just at fast food restaurants, but at all kinds of places, call centers, coffee shops, the tech industry, automakers who have been taken in by the far right ideology. They have been told that their problems are caused by immigrants. Their problems are caused by black and brown people. Their problems are caused by the lack of a police state and the government being too soft on crime and not locking up enough people. A lot of working class people have been led to believe that the reason that the next generation of workers are stuck in a cycle of low wage, short term service sector jobs like fast food 
is because of some kind of liberal cultural Marxist conspiracy. This is a very common thing that people do when they're in a position like Morpin, where they are very disconnected from the working class, where they just assume that working class people are, you know, racist, transphobic, and if he doesn't see how he's being classes with this, I don't know. It's also not what Forsyth was talking about at all. It's literally completely 100% unrelated. What are we supposed to do with this? Like, so far in this video, he's just been addressing someone who isn't who he claims to be addressing the entire video. Well, the job of the Marxist is to show the real reason why workers at Burger King are so underpaid and hard worked, why the United States is declining, why living standards are going. Who gives a shit if the United States is declining? That's a good thing. I want the United States to decline. Sounds like a bit of a nationalist there, buddy. Down overall, and why there is such a rise in poverty and suffering in the Western countries. Their job is to show that this is because of the billionaire banker ruling class that dominates the global economy. And you know, Fortslam kind of, he agreed with that earlier in the video when you played the thing and then, you know, just completely misconstrued what he was saying. Exposure if we don't get some of it, even though we're producing more than we need and throwing away almost half of everything at a time when that overproduction is poised to make our planet uninhabitable, just so that the already unfathomably rich ghouls can have a computer readout that says that their wealth increased by 0.0001%. And the only way that you can get the means of your survival is by throwing yourself into perpetual and worse. Their job is to show that this is because of the billionaire banker ruling class that dominates the global economy and is making super profits by grinding working people all over the world, not just in the United States. He literally he fucking said this and you replied to it with something else. He does the exact same thing in the hilarious clip that he showed of Walsh. He does that the entire fucking video. He does this with everyone all the time. You criticize him, you are an imperialist. You criticize any of his beliefs, you are an imperialist, you are an agent sent by the CIA. So how, how dare he, you know, point to Vosch doing that to him, rightfully so, but then spend an entire video doing exactly that to someone else. ...reality and discrimination, whether they be gender non-conforming individuals, that by lifting up the most oppressed and joining <laughs> arm in arm in solidarity, <laughs> that they can become empowered that by standing up and organizing resistance against the billionaire banker ruling class that controls the world and fighting back. Yeah, that's by a good point fighting... too by Javier Mendez. That when he specifically references adults, that is a dog whistle related to the idea that, you know, people are trying to turn the kids trans, which is a very common dog whistle used in the UK, especially where the woman that he brought onto his show happened to be from. Working class people taken in by bigotry and hate need to understand that that bigotry and hate serves the billionaires and bankers and that solidarity is the way out. But you can't do that, according to Mr. Thoughtslime. The fuck does that have to do with anything? What is he talking about? I 100% guarantee you that Thoughtslime thinks that workplace solidarity is incredibly important, especially when it comes to issues like this. Like, for example, what if the trans person here in this in four times example said, so I'm worried, I'm worried about that I'm going to get fired for being trans if I come out. Can you help me? And so you, you go to your coworkers and you say, hey, our mate here, they they want to they want to transition and they're worried about their job. And we all say that we, we'll, we'll go on strike if anything happens to them. There you go. Workplace solidarity, intersectional workplace solidarity, very much so. And if you just reduce all of this to sort of gen generic solidarity, like generic class solidarity, and you claim to be blind to these, sort of, these, these sorts of specific issues faced by marginalized people, you fucking suck, dude. That's all there is to it. And it's a problem. You take a variety of factors and reduce it down to simply class. And sometimes you gotta do that. Sometimes it's a useful shorthand but it may have the unintended, or in some cases, very much intended, side effect of erasing or making apologetics for someone else's oppression. See, according to this pseudo-leftist milieu, if you talk about working people, if you talk about class struggle, if you rant against the billionaires and bankers and monopolists that rule the world, you're a fascist. 
According to them. What the fuck is he talking about? What the fuck is he talking about? What the fuck is he talking about? What slime is talking about, you know, basically exactly what he just did, which was class reductionism. And he somehow infers from that that, you know, if you care about the working class, if you care about working families, if you're against billionaires, you know, Port Slime hates you. Ah, oh, it hurts. It hurts my brain. Them, working class is a fascist buzzword. According to them, working families is somehow a discriminatory phrase. Working class is a fascist buzzword. He literally just made this up. No one thinks that. No one thinks that. I mean, if they do, it's certainly not fucking Fort Slime. Certainly not even Vorsch. No one. Something that is very core to fascism is the constructed enemy. And Mr. Morpen here, who has consulted quite a bit with Nazbols, is very good at constructing his enemy. Interesting. Any appeal to people on the basis of advancing their living conditions and building a better life, doing that is unacceptable in their world view. For them, socialism is not about working people casting off their bigoted ideas, standing arm in arm, fighting back against the billionaires and boss. I find it kind of gross. He just assumes that working class people are bigoted. You know, the people who benefit most from the system, from the racist system, from the transphobic system, from the homophobic system, in the US and in basically every other country, you know, are not exactly working class. What he's saying here is just complete bullshit. No one thinks, no one that he's replying to in this thinks what he thinks they think, thinks what he's trying to say that they think. That's why in this entire video, he's only actually shown towards Simon on screen twice. It's, we're 21 minutes in. ...and middle class intellectuals, and them don't standing worry, up off against the, end of this the mob of else, inferior but. rabble who don't go to NYU to learn about these abstract gender theories that you... There we go. Abstract gender theories, you know, you only... Does he think that trans people don't exist, that they only exist in theory or something? That there's not, like, millions upon millions of trans people the world over whose lives are very much not based on ideology or theory? This is just... Well. ...must immediately agree with, or else you're the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. I think the best way to understand the difference between this individual and myself is simply to look at the name that he gave himself, Thought Slime, and the image in the background of his video. What the fuck? Mr. Thought Slime has this image of slime, green gross slime, pouring out of a sewer. What is wrong with this fucking guy? What is he talking about? Like he, it's the, the funniest thing about this is first he goes like, people, these people from NYU talking about this abstract gender theory, and two seconds later he's like, so we, we need to analyze, we need to analyze his name and the slime in his background. You know, what can we infer from this slime? What can we infer from the color of the curtains? Behind <laughs> him, the whole time he is speaking. I don't find that appealing. I don't enjoy looking at gross. I don't enjoy looking at you, dude. Why are you wearing an ill-fitting fucking suit in your house, seated against the wall? Why, why, why do you work, like, you're a professional journalist, apparently. Why do you, like, have, like, a webcam that's worse quality than mine? What is going on for you to criticize someone else's presentation? You know, what time's presentation is infinitely better than yours. His name, it's a fucking joke. Obviously, the background looks fucking great. Looks great. Would, 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 would you, would, the fact that, you know, you're just completely misconstruing every single thing that he's saying be somehow less stupid if he were wearing a suit alone in his own home? Should he, should he spend 20 minutes getting dressed every morning to record a video? Is, is, that, is that like the, the, you know, the, the gate here that people have to... Oh, it's just unbelievable. ...slime, and I'm not particularly interested in hearing what someone says if they name themselves after something that I don't particularly like looking Ah, oh, there we go. Maybe that's why he didn't actually listen to a single fucking thing for what Slime said in this video. At. But you see, I'm from the working class. I grew up in a small town full of people who worked in factories. Working people are... Growing up in a small town full of people who worked in factories does not make you from the working class. There are bourgeois in that small town. 
Are you one of them, Caleb? I don't know. But the fact that he went to university, apparently didn't have to work during his, his studies, as he noted in this video, because he only went to, he only worked fast food for a summer job, you know, points to something else. I don't know. We'll see. We're trying to get rid of slime. This is like, he's trying so hard to be profound and it just comes off like a parody. Mr. Okay, I'm going to do my best impression here. Mr. Ford Slime, in conclusion, when I look at your channel, I see your name. Slime? I see your background. Slime? Well, Mr. Ford Slime. Me, as a suited up individual, to me that is disgusting. People like me, we are trying to get rid of slime. We do not want any more slime in our lives. We want to get rid of the slime. We want to get rid of the slime that we is the billionaires. We want to get rid of the slime that is global capitalism. We want to get rid of the slime that is imperialism. So, Mr. Fort Slime, I find it very interesting that you endorse imperialism, billionaires, and capitalism by naming yourself after slime, a disgusting substance that no one should ever want. How was my Caleb Morpin? They're trying to get rid of dirt. They don't like the fact that you know, the infrastructure of the United States is falling apart, that our roads and bridges are in decay, that, uh, that our water is being contaminated with lead, that this is opioids so fucking drugs stupid. are taking the lives of... This is working. like, this is what I imagine like someone who watched like an Ollie video, like a Philosophy Tube video, and then tried to imitate his style and tried to come up with like a profound conclusion while having absolutely no idea what they were talking about. This is what they would sound like people in big numbers, that there's hopelessness and despair among working people. Guys, so his name is Fort Slime, and as you can see, there's slime in these pipes. So, Fort Slime, are you pro-slime? Are you from the pro-slime lobby? Mr. Fort Slime, what do you have to say for yourself? Like, he's gonna go fucking, like, doorstep Fort Slime. Mr. Fort Slime, Mr. Fort Slime, here is a pipe, it's full of slime. Do you approve of this pipe? Do you approve of this pipe? Sir, come back! You know, watching this, where I've given him you know, I'm actually taking him seriously, which is more than he deserves. You know, it's, it's hard not to make fun of him because this is so fucking stupid. God. Uh, that so much poverty is taking place. They don't like that. Working people want to get to a better life. They want things to be nicer. They want things to be more hopeful, more secure, more stable. And yes, danger is solidarity. The danger of destruction. The public good and not profit. Countries of the Middle East. Preaching. The eradicated. He's literally incapable of staying on topic. He just cannot directly address anything. View that the world is all going. It's a destructive worldview, and it's not a socialist worldview. And it's not surprising that some of the most powerful institutions in the United. Okay, that was fucking dumb. So, yeah.